All right, students, this is a level 10. And I'm going to tell you why it's level 10. It's a level 10 because you have to take out a GCF, that's this guy, before you factor it. And that, see, I actually have a mistake on here. Um, I have uh, I have my answer, but I forgot to put my GCF on it. Okay, so I got to put my GCF on it, and then I'll, I'll box it. So I just put the 3x squared right here, and then uh, and then that's it. Okay, box your answer. Okay, so we had to take out the GCF first, and then we're going to factor it. Okay, now, all the work is already here, but I'm going to walk through it step by step. And uh, I want you guys to ask me questions if you guys got any. And there's... So you're supposed to look at all the terms. The first thing you do is you see if you can make all the numbers smaller. Because when you, especially when you have the bigger numbers, it kind of makes it a lot harder to factor. And so if you could take out uh, a common factor, you can make them smaller. It makes it a lot easier. And so I want to look at each of these terms. Let's see, I want to write them out. 3x to the fourth minus 3x to the third minus 90x squared. And I'm going to take out a common factor. What is a number that I can divide all those numbers by? Three. Yep. So I can take a three out. Now look at the variables. I have x to the fourth, x to the three, and x two. Can I divide all those variables by the same number of x's? Or what's the most x's I can take out of each of them? Okay, the biggest uh, number of x's is two. So I can take out x squared from each of these. All right, when I do that, I got to rewrite my polynomial. So I go 3 divided by 3, which is 1. And then I have x to the 4th divided by x squared. What is x to the 4th divided by x squared? That is x squared. You're right. Now I have negative 3 divided by positive 3, which is negative 1. And I have x to the 3rd divided by x squared. That is x. 90 divided by, actually it's negative 90, divided by 3 will be negative 30. And then I have x squared divided by x squared. That actually equals 1, but we don't have to write times 1 because that's kind of, uh, it's just extra. We don't need to do that. Okay, so now what I'm trying to do is factor this part. So I'm going to see if I can factor that part. If I can factor that part, I could write my answer, which would be 3x squared. And then I would have two binomials, a number there, a number there, and two more numbers over here. Okay, so there's three terms. If I use the box, I can only see uh, the first term and the last term. This middle term has to be split up. Okay, I'm gonna box it. That, that guy right there has to be split up. And I put that middle term split up in those two boxes. I, you guys have used the box a lot. You know that when you uh, simplify, a lot of times these two numbers add together. And right now they're adding together to give you negative one. Now some of you guys got really good at this and you're able to find those missing numbers a different way than the way I'm going to do it right now. Okay, so don't think that you have to do it this way, but this way does it, it's kind of like a silver bullet. It like always works. So what we do is we're going to take the first term and the last term and multiply those two together. So that's going to be 1 times negative 30. And that gives me a negative 30. And then I'm going to list out underneath it all the numbers that multiply to give me 30. Okay, I always start with 1. So I have 1 times 30. And then I go up to 2. Can I multiply 2 by something to get 30? Yes, I can multiply 15. Next is 3. Can I multiply 3 by something? Yeah, I can multiply it by 10. The next would be 4, uh, but 4 doesn't work. I can't multiply it by anything. And then 5, 5 times, oh, 5 times 6 gives me 30. And what's after 5? The next number would be 6, right? But I already have 6 listed. That's when you know you're done, when you circle around and you get to the number that you already did. So those are our, our numbers that multiply to give me 30. Now what you have to do is find out which of those numbers is going to add to give you negative 1. Now, some people call this the big X. Some people call it the diamond puzzle. I'm going to call it the diamond puzzle right now. So we put negative 30 up top and 10 on the bottom. And I just do it to help organize my thoughts. Okay, you don't have to do this. So negative 30, I get from this guy. The 10, wait, not 10, not 10. 
negative one I get from this guy right here. Okay, so which of these numbers multiplies to give to give you negative 30 and then adds to give you negative one? Now, they all give me 30, so let's just think about the negative one. Uh, can you think of any of these terms or can you pick two of these numbers that will add to give me negative one? And the answer is five and six, but one of these has to be negative. Which one has to be negative, the five or the six? So I get a negative one when I add them. It'd be a negative six. Now it works. Five times negative six gives me negative 30. And then five plus negative six gives me negative one. And these numbers right here, these are the numbers that go in those boxes. Okay, so I'm gonna write that out. Let's see. We got five x and then negative six x. And you could put them in any order. It doesn't matter which box you put them in. Uh, and then you start solving your box. Okay, so what two numbers or what greatest common factor can I take out of both of those? The answer is X. And then I can go, uh, I can put an X right here because I know X times X gives me X squared. Okay, and then what times X will give me negative 6X? Negative 6. And then what times X will give me positive 5X? Five. Now I have my answer. So I'm going to write those in here. I'm going to put x plus 5 and then x. Now it's supposed to be minus 6, but I can just put negative 6 if I want to. So you could go x minus 6 or x plus negative 6. And then I'm going to box my answer because i got a lot of work. I want to make sure whoever's looking at my stuff uh, sees clearly where my answer is. Okay, so you can see I got the same answer for both of these. You can actually write them in a different order. You can say 3x squared, and you can put the x minus 6 first, and then x plus 5. The order doesn't matter because the multiplication is commutative. And that's how you do that. That's how you completely factor.